Let's bring in Arkansas Republican Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, good morning to you. Morning, Steve. Good to be on with you all. Good to have you as well. You know, over the last couple of weeks, we've noticed that the administration is reluctant to call it a crisis. It's not a crisis. It's a disaster when you look at what's going on down there. Yeah, they also sent FEMA, and in case anyone has forgotten, the E in FEMA stands for emergency. Yeah. So I, I guess you could at least call it an emergency. But yeah, it's a total disaster. You heard Griff's report that now they may be releasing people into the country without so much as a court date. And I know that Joe Biden and Secretary Mayorkas have been claiming that, oh, Donald Trump dismantled our immigration system. No, it's Joe Biden that dismantled the effective policies that had closed our border, allowing migrants to stay in Mexico while they processed asylum claims or forcing them to make asylum claims, not in the United States, their country of choice, but the first country they passed through when they left their own country, places like Guatemala. Now, they claim that some of these countries, oh, they're too violent. We can't possibly expect them to stay there, or seek asylum there. Baltimore has a higher murder rate than most of these countries in the Central American Northern Triangle. Yeah. So why should we expect that migrants have a right to come to our country to escape the so-called high violence there when Baltimore and other cities in America have higher murder rates than some of these countries in Central America? Senator, you mentioned that Alejandro Mayorkas is blaming the Trump administration. In fact, let's listen to him in his own words yesterday on Fox News Sunday prior administration dismantled the orderly and safe way that these children could make their claims. It tore down the Central American Minors Program that allowed these children to make their claims under United States law without having to take the perilous journey. We are rebuilding that process. We are encouraging uh, families not to send their children. If they arrive uh, at the border, we have a responsibility to allow them to make their claims under United States law and to address, these are vulnerable children, to address their needs, and we can do so in a safe and orderly manner. It takes time because the entire system was dismantled. So there's the Biden administration blaming the current crisis on the Trump administration you've pointed to, and we've laid out the policies that Joe Biden changed on literally his first day in office. We've heard from migrants in their own words saying why they are traveling north. And then there's this, Senator, from a Mexican official. He said the following when it comes to President Trump's policies and the incentive or disincentive it created. He said the Biden administration's appeal to do more against migration has put Mexico in a tough position. While Mr. Trump strong-armed Mexico in to militarizing the border. Some Mexican officials argue that his harsh policies may have at times helped lessen their load by deterring migrants from attempting to make the journey north. Mm. So I know it's a bit of everything, Senator, but when we talk about rhetoric or policies, what is it that needs to change from the Biden administration? Yeah, well, Secretary Mayorkas is plainly in over his head. And no matter how many TV interviews he does from Washington, while he won't let press travel with him to the border, or how many bumbling statements Joe Biden says over helicopter engines that you shouldn't come now. Remember, that's the critical word. Don't, they're not saying don't come, just don't come now. Mm -hmm. Actions speak louder than words. And when thousands of migrants get from Central America to our border and they get released in our country and they send text messages back and post on social media, hey, you can all come up now, the border's open, guess what? People are going to come because if you let them in, more will come. The simple policy changes, again, would be applying the pandemic exclusionary order to all migrants, not exempting minors. That's what Joe Biden did. Not surprisingly, we got a lot more minors. Second, requiring so-called asylum seekers to seek asylum in the first country through which they pass, especially Guatemala, since they must pass through Guatemala from all points to the south. Donald Trump had that in effect. Joe Biden tore it up. And then finally, if those asylum seekers get to our southern border, requiring them to remain in Mexico rather than leasing, releasing them into the country, or with a court date, or, or now without a court date at all, those three policies could be reinstituted this week and they would immediately stop this border crisis. Yeah. But Joe Biden refuses to do so. Senator, uh, we heard from an interview uh, that Will just had with Julio Rosas um, proof that the Biden administration is having a press blackout. What can Congress do to let the American people know what's going on inside these detention centers and how the policies from this administration are playing out, not just for um, those who are being detained, but especially for the for the children? I mean, it seems like we're, our government is now complicit in human trafficking and child trafficking. <laughs> Yeah, if the Biden administration is really proud of its so-called humane and more compassionate 
policy on our southern border. I think they'd be letting uh, the press travel with Secretary Mayorkas and senators and congressmen are going to the border. We will continue to highlight uh, that they are denying that kind of press access. But the questions that a lot of the press wants to ask, Rachel, are really kind of a secondary question, like how many beds are available or hot meals or showers. If you don't let the migrants in, you don't have to worry about how many beds, beds you have available or how many hot meals or how quickly they're being processed. That was the policy before Joe Biden took office. We didn't let migrants in. Therefore, we didn't have the problems that we have at these processing centers. It's the policies of the Biden administration that have sent the signal to Latin America that our border is wide open and why you see the kind of uh, um, pictures that we just saw at the southern border. Migrants wearing Joe Biden let us in t-shirts or flying the Biden campaign flag at their migrant camp. The policies have to change. It's not about how many beds we have or how fast we can process illegal aliens into our country who have no right to be in our country in the first place. Senator, let's talk about your day job as a U.S. Senate tour. Currently, the Senate is split 50-50 Republicans and Democrats. Uh, but the Democrats can't get their entire agenda achieved, the stuff that Nancy Pelosi sends over, because you've got this crazy filibuster thing where you need 60 votes to move on. It's interesting, now that it's 50-50 and they've got the White House and the House, the senators who not too long ago were talking about, you can't get rid of the filibuster, are now saying, we should get rid of the filibuster. Watch this flashback of people then and now, and they're all Democrats. I can tell you that would be the end of the Senate as it was originally uh, devised and created going back to our founding fathers. Today's filibuster is often used to prevent the Senate from even starting to debate important ideas. It has become the death grip. The point is we still left the 60 votes in place right. for the Supreme Court. you bring Court, it back? And yeah. Mitch McConnell changed that. I would prefer to bring it back. I favor getting rid of the filibuster. Without the 60 vote threshold for legislation, the Senate becomes much more subject to the winds of short term electoral change. No senator would like to see this happen. We hope our Republican colleagues will work with us to produce that change. But if not, we will put our heads together and figure out how to go, and everything is on the table. Okay, so everything is on the table. They want to get rid of it so they can get stuff done. Wait until the Republicans take the Senate, and then they can get stuff done. Is this a good idea? No, Steve, it's not. But, you know, if you're looking for stands on principle, regardless of the circumstances, Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin is probably not where you want to look. Uh, but it's not just those two. 27 Democrats in the Senate right now signed a letter four years ago pleading with Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer not to change the rules and the traditions of the Senate. Right. And now they have the barest of majorities in the Senate and the House, and they want to ram through unpopular changes on a party line basis like making Washington, D.C. a state, or packing the federal court system, or granting amnesty to 15 million illegal aliens and giving them voting rights. They want to do that because they're afraid they're going to lose power next year. But here's the record we should examine, too. Republicans haven't filibustered a single bill in this Congress. Look last year, though. Democrats filibustered more bills and nominees than at any time yeah. in American history. So they're, they're claiming somehow that Mitch McConnell, the Republicans have been obstructionist. Again, we haven't filibustered a single bill yet. The rules of the Senate, the traditions of the Senate are designed to foster compromise and consensus so we can craft legislation with broad bipartisan support that will be lasting and enduring, not laws that are party line that will be unpopular and that will be changed as soon as you get another election result. Yeah. That's what our founding fathers designed the Senate to do. That's what the Senate rules and tradition accomplish throughout the years. Senator, I want to leave the news cycle for just one moment because I've become fascinated with your ability to somehow curry controversy. You're a relatively mild-mannered guy, but for some reason, controversy comes calling. You know, look back at the past year, you writing an op-ed in the New York Times calling for the military to intervene in riots on the streets of our country, or you questioning at times the origins. And the point is, actually, you were on to something that time has proven you correct about the origins of COVID. And yet, in response to these points, which again, time has proven out for you, the left has absolutely lost their mind over what you have to say. Why do you think that is? <laughs> well, Will, I often think I'm just speaking my mind and observing some basic facts and common sense and uh, the left acts like I'm saying something crazy, but for the most part, I think I'm just saying what most Arkansas, Arkansans think as well. 
Um, so I, I'm grateful to have the chance to be their voice and be the voice of common sense Americans all across the country who see things like our border crisis or who see things like the rioting in our streets last week that was going unchecked and ask, where is the leadership who's going to stand up and represent my views on this? Now, that may not play well in uh, TV studios in Washington, D.C. or in media uh, newsrooms, but, you know, I, I represent Arkansas. I, I don't represent the far left and elite cultural institutions. So I'll keep speaking out my mind and I'll keep defending <laughs> these things that I think are basic common sense to most Americans. Well, Senator, speaking of common sense, your governor, Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson, says common sense is going to replace mandates. Take a listen. We're a year into this and we know so much more today than we did a year ago. And so uh, we had to educate people, understand the importance of the mask. And I expect even though we take the mask mandate away, that people will continue to use the mask when you cannot socially distance and whenever uh, there's the risk of the virus. So common sense is going to uh, replace uh, uh, mandates. We've lifted the business restrictions in Arkansas. Uh, we are going to, to school as we have all year long with in-classroom instruction. And people need this. President Biden has recognized that. You can do all of that and at the same time take the virus seriously. Senator, what's been the reaction to this change in the mask mandate in Arkansas? We're a year into this. I and we this Go ahead. It's so good we wanted to hear it twice. <laughs> uh, I support this decision. I, uh, I, I support this decision. You know, we're, we're just a few weeks away from vaccines being available to every adult in the country who wants one. And it's springtime, uh, and we are a year into this pandemic, and we know a lot about it. So I support this decision. I expect many states will be following suit. Um, I'm looking forward to everything in Arkansas getting back to normal very soon and across the country getting back to normal very soon as well. It seems like common sense was the theme this morning. Yeah. Senator, thank you very much for joining us live. Thank you, Senator. Thank, thank you, you Senator. all. All right.